This episode of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on December the 5th, 2016. This episode, all about the backup. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, uh, folks, we're a couple of minutes uh, late getting started here because of uh, a problem, and here comes a late, a late comer now. So it's a good thing we're late. Come on in. Fast Eddie, come on, boy. How you doing? Not too bad. All right. So now, are we ready to go? <laughs> I think I need five more minutes. Okay. Um, Last week, um, we talked about some stuff that uh, the next step of it is really how to back things up. Okay, we haven't done, we haven't talked about backup for quite a while. And so we're going to do that. Uh, how to back, back up uh, things on your computer in case they become uh, lost, uh, stolen, or corrupted. And... That can happen easily. Uh, last week we talked about Crypto Locker, which can uh, lock all your files so you can't use them again. If you have them backed up somewhere else other than the computer you're using, um, you have a copy of them that you can put back to where you want it to be. So with that, uh, James is going to talk to us about uh, making backups of stuff. And uh, James, you're up. Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right. So there are multiple ways to back up, some more convoluted than others. Um, there, who knows what this is? <laughs> Good. So this is a 16 gigabyte thumb drive. It's pretty much the highest you're going to find currently. I don't think no, there's... No, no, you get up to 64 gigs, but that's the standard. Yeah, standard size now. Before, you would get like a gig, yeah. <laughs> if lucky. Um, so you can put your document files, pictures, videos on here, or you can use an external hard drive. Now, external hard drives come in many different sizes and shapes. Um, and how to set them up. This this one's pretty simple. It's just you plug it in, and it will power up through the USB, send data through USB. But the one, uh, some of them you have to plug in through USB, but have a separate plug going into your power outlet. Um, just because of um, pretty much old technology at that point. Yeah, they take more power than the computer can deliver in yeah. 5 volts. How much was and this one? Anywhere today, uh, a, a terabyte uh, can be had for 60 or $70. Now, that that's like a standard um, spin disk one, like a normal hard drive. A solid state version of that will still cost around like 200 bucks. Um, Solid states run faster, but you don't really need to worry about that if this is just going to be for backing up purposes. Um, but yeah, there are uh, even cloud ways, which I think Grandpa's going to talk about. And you can back up certain things on CDs as well, um, if you guys remember that lesson a while back. Uh, with a shampoo, you can um, you can pretty much back up anything but programs to a certain extent. Uh, so what you would do is you just put in your in this case the USB your thumb drive 
and you'll get a message saying that your computer sees it. So in my computer, wherever that is, there it is. I'm just gonna put that there. I'll be here a lot. Uh, now this is what uh, ours is called. It's called the HP version 150W. So if I open that, there are things in here already, but if you got a brand new one from the dollar store or Best Buy, Future Shop, they'll have nothing on it. Now, uh, at this point, uh, I should tell you that I have set my computer to show me all of the hidden files and folders. And that's what you're seeing right there. Except, the except, hidden files except, and folders, <laughs> the trash can, the volume information, and uh, all of that, the spotlight, how it searches, that's what you're seeing there. In most cases, your computer is set so that it's not going to show you the hidden files and folders. The reason for that is you have no business being in them. And if you were to make that hidden file or folder go away by mistake, you can, you can easily damage the hard drive or USB drive that you just put in. So that's why you see that stuff right now. Ordinarily, you wouldn't see it because your computer is told not to show it to you. Yeah, as mo most of the really f uh, things that make the computer run are in there. So, messing with it can be bad unless you know exactly what you're looking for. So, I have the thumb drive plugged in and I also have um, the Toshiba external hard drive. Which will also be in this PC. In this case it's called... Toshiba EXT. Now, Grandpa uses um, this drive a lot to back up uh, his clients um, who is about to lose their stuff through bad programming of Windows or whatever. So, like for example, this is my great grandfather's things. Uh, so you can back up all of them and reinstall Windows or whatever, even put it onto a, a, di a different computer entirely and you won't lose your things. So to actually back up, I would recommend when you open up your thumb drive or your external drive is to make a new folder right on the root which is the main uh, file and we'll name it for this example backup so now you will you will open up backup and move that to the side like I've showed you before by holding left click on the window and dragging it to the side. Now what we want to open is your um, profile picture which where is it? There it is. Right over here. So your profile picture uh, folder will always be a folder with a person uh, next to that folder and that's your personal folder it will have it will either be named user uh, admin owner, owner your name, your name <laughs> whatever uh, anything that the computer whatever the computer is named it will be named that uh, named as is if that makes sense <laughs> so we're gonna open up the folder and we're going to click and drag to the other side 
and bring this one back up. So we've already made a backup folder. So let's say uh, there's a very important video I want. You can rummage through the video and get certain things. In this case, I'll just take the captures folder and we'll copy it into there. So, now we have captures in there. Or, if you wanted just to do the whole folder, again, you would just hold the le left click and drag it over. This place. And now I have the videos folder entirely. So, everything that was in that folder is now on my backup. Um, same thing with pictures. So you can say, oh, I just want this one picture. It's when we were on honeymoon or whatever. Or I have a thousand pictures in here, which I do not. And I want to save all of them. So I'll just drag the pictures over. And I don't know why it keeps asking me to rename the... Well, it's because it's desktop anyway. So, now I have all the pictures, and same thing, we can go for uh, downloads if you want, and you can bring that over, or just certain things from downloads, like in our, our case, maybe uh, we just want to know where a shampoo is at all times, so we can drag that over. So now, once, if we do lose everything on this computer, we don't have to go searching for a shampoo installer again. We can just run it and have a shampoo and start right off again. The other thing, would, the, the main things you want to back up is documents, pictures, music, and video. And um, if you want, I think Chrome can do this, is with its bookmarks, you can import the bookmarks and settings through the three dots in the, underneath the X and going to bookmarks and import bookmarks and settings. Now what this will do will create a file that has all of the bookmarks inside that file and we'll save it to wherever you want or not. Oh wait that's import. How do you export? I know you can. <laughs> well Firefox can. I'd have to play with it. Yeah. We'll probably update that on next week. <laughs> I know Firefox sure can, uh, for sure can. Google Chrome, eh, I never liked it. <laughs> so, the other thing you want to realize is where you're saving uh, these pictures and documents and your downloads. Because if you, um, for example, if you save a document and you're trying to find a new place, some people, a lot of a lot of people that we've tried to back up their stuff, will have things on the C directory and not in a folder, just in the C directory. It is a pain to find. Um, so, for example, we don't have anything here, but this picture, VR, VCR, red list, bump, BMP. Um, like, for example, people put pictures in here. We have to go through the C drive, find the pictures, 
So make a habit in, um, to save things in the default selection because Windows will help you out and put them in the default selection to make it easier. Downloading things from web browsers puts it in downloads. Um, any document programs put it in my documents. Um, pictures will go into my pictures, so on and so forth. So you just have to kn know and remember, oh, I put something in blankety blank space and I need to go there so I can back it up. The, the other thing you can back up is things on the desktop. For example, I, uh, on my computer I have like a thousand <laughs> folders for different things and I was just wanting to back them up just because of um, I like to write stories in my spare time. I know that's weird for, for someone like me, a gamer. I like to write some stories every once in a while. So I back those up because that's a lot of time and effort that I do not want to lose for whatever reason. So I will throw those in there as well. And what you need to also do when backing up is if you remember that you made a change to a document or a picture or something, it's that you also need to resave, re-back up that folder. Whatever you change on your computer won't be changed on your thumb drive or hard drive unless you set it up in a certain way, which is not what we're going to talk about. It's very convoluted. Um, in some cases, you can back up your contacts for uh, email as well. Um, I don't know the gist of it and which programs do do that, but I know you can. Um, you can pretty much back up anything that you can grab and drag over. Only exception is programs. Um, just taking the program folder and moving it into the backup won't um, technically back up the, the program. If you plug it into another computer, it won't run. And that's mainly because the programs just separate themselves into 500 different folders <laughs> because of laziness, yeah? What if you just want to back up all your favorites? All your favorites? You can do that too. If you use Microsoft uh, Edge, I think also saves it into the favorites folder and um, Internet Explorer also puts it in the favorites folder. You, we have a favorites folder, you can just grab that, drag it over, and you've bookmarked your favorites. Now, as I said before okay. as I said before <laughs> will you stop s s skip everything um, with certain web browsers you can uh, export your bookmarks um, Firefox uh, can I know for sure I've done it many times and Google Chrome is somewhere I'm pretty sure Google Chrome is slightly different though you, can you make, have to do it from uh, Bookmark Manager. Yeah, you can also make a Google account with Google Chrome, and that will automatically update it through any Google Chrome that you have. How do you make a Google account with Google Chrome? You just... Uh, I think we went through that uh, last week or the yeah. week before. Um, you Let's go here. Mm. You Can't have forget to, you're signed in here. Uh, you have to go to Google, and you, you would then try and sign in. And sign in. And it's uh, in this case, it's we're going to ask it to sign in with a different account. It already remembers me and add an account. And at that point, you can put in all the information 
that Google will require of you. And once that has been approved, you have created an account. Well, okay. you, you skipped a step here. Um, if you don't already have uh, a Gmail, um, you will then have to create a, an account below that. And if you can't remember what to have, can you make a you can make as many as you want. I don't recommend it. Write, write, write things down. Even I, I forget. You need to make sure it's uh, letter for letter. So if you have an Apple, Apple, if you have an uppercase L for loser, then you need the um, uh, capital letter. <laughs> Sorry. You need a capital letter as written. So if you write things just like, yeah, yeah, well, there we go. So you need to always remember that you wrote it like that. Um, so capital N at the beginning, capital L at the end, and having a seizure in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's the password can um, it's the password that mainly you need to make sure that you spell it right um, and as much as we like to say have different passwords for everything you you could get really confused oh god what password was for this again um, I've had to change my passwords and everything 20 times in one day just because I kept forgetting <laughs> what the password was and what I changed it to so that was fun but yeah, you would just put your first last name um, whatever you want your gmail to, uh, account to be so in this case we'll just put down computer club TXT, why not? Um, so I have an old lowercase, no spaces, no fancy things. And then you would just, again, do uh, capital J I M O P. And you just make sure that you write down if you did a capital letter, capital letter. If you did a number, put in a number. Um, and you have to put in your password twice, so, and all that. So just do what the, what Google tells you to put in, and it will make an account as easy as one, two, three. Which, Google also has its own, um, I'm keep drawing blanks, has its own backup service called Google Drive, I think. Um, Grandpa's probably going to talk about that. Um, so yeah, backing up is pretty simple. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's just I want this picture. Click and drag to the window you want it. And it will copy and move it. Now to Sa you have to safely remove any USB ports you put in there, whether it's a thumb drive or your external hard drive, because if you just pull it out, it could still be in the middle of something, and you could damage your backup data, and this was all pointless. So, in where all these little things are, your sound, your... Um, Wi-Fi, if you have Wi-Fi, your battery, if you're a laptop, is one that is a USB with a check mark on it. It's right here. Just it will look like a square with a tinier square with two tinier squares inside that tiny square. It's on every machine, even old ones. Um, you, the old one's even easier to identify as it's colored. I don't know why they didn't want to make this one colored. But you would just click that. 
and you have to remember what the name is so in this case uh, it's the HP V150W so make sure everything's closed in at first yeah don't do that <laughs> don't do that <laughs> it's very bad it, you might think it's okay but one day you pull it out suddenly you no longer have data on that USB drive so once we've closed it uh, again hit the USB and hit eject whatever and when that message pops up it's safe to take it out and you'll have done no damage to your USB drive same thing with um, to uh, the external hard drives you want to hit the USB and remember the name and just hit eject and you can pull that out too so with that I've now backed up what I wanted this computer can fall into a river but I don't care I have my data yeah okay. um, your computer's gonna die or whatever you're gonna get a new one and you can't back up the iTunes program but you can back up your music because it's in my music file that's where your music is stored yeah. So, okay, it's on a, your music's on a thumb drive, and you, and you get your new computer, you put in I, new iTunes. Does what you then put back in become like a former iTunes music library, or does it, be, does it the, what happens to the The music? best way with iTunes... Is uh, to re-import yeah. the music from your backup device. Okay. And, and iTunes will do that for you. Oh, okay. it, it's part of iTunes that you can import uh, music in, and iTunes will go out to your computer and find all the music you have and re-import it back in properly. Okay. Just putting the iTunes folder back where you got it from won't work. It has to be, uh, uh, iTunes has to know all about that music and just Putting the folder back where you got it is not allowing iTunes to know all about it. Right. Now, depending on how you set up iTunes, um, you will also need to back up uh, the actual music. So if you had a music file yeah, and you put it into iTunes, yeah. back that up as well. Oh, okay. Because iTunes needs to know its di uh, directory. So if you have the song in iTunes, but you don't have the song anywhere on your uh, computer, it will just say, um, eh? <laughs> so make sure to back up uh, everything. It's always good to have doubles of uh, certain things just in case a backup happens, fail, or whatever. But with music, you want to back up the iTunes folder and any music file that you have separately just so it knows the directory for it to go. Um, I don't think there's much of anything else I can talk about, so, yeah. We can still use CDs to back everything. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, with just CDs before Grandpa takes over, um, you won't be able... Uh, able to do uh, certain things like if you put music in there it will depending how you do do it it will either be an mp3 uh, CD um, CD CD or a uh, just a file CD which you can't play the music off of it, but it, backs it up. yeah it does it still backs it up and you can I think you can still drag it over with CDs if they're not rewritable so with that finished, you're it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just gonna um, see if James missed anything here as we go. The the first thing that that uh, I want to say to you is that uh, when you're backing up, uh, try to think of uh, a backup as a three-step process. Um, you can take data like your pictures. 
and you can take that my pictures file and you can put it somewhere else on the computer that way if you do damage the my pictures file you haven't lost anything you've got a copy of what you did on the computer well, yeah, or, or wherever, or uh, put it in a root directory somewhere else, uh, but not on this directly on the C drive. Put it in your in your account, um, so you have two copies of my pictures. Okay, so if you damage one, you still have a good one. Yes. Would that not be in your user folder also, like in your 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 explorer and your user folder? Are they two separate things? No, no, the, the user folder and the explorer are, are the same thing. You navigate through, the, through them to the same place. Um, so that's, that's backup number one. Backup number two is one of these, a thumb drive or a USB drive, uh, about um, less than 20 bucks for this, for a 16 gig. This, like I said, is between $60, $70, depending on what you buy. Um, the uh, backup is now off the computer and onto something safe, like one of these, or even burn them to DVD, your pictures, your music, your documents, whatever. Um, and once that's done, you have a copy that's not on the computer, it's off somewhere else, and... Um, if something happens to the computer as a whole, the local computer, you have all of your stuff. Uh, last week I talked about CryptoLocker, the program that can get into your computer. You don't know about it and all of a sudden all of your, your files are locked and you can't get at them anymore. Uh, and I told you at the time, if that happens, I can't help you. If you haven't backed up, I can't help you. Okay. The one thing you have to remember is that when you finish backing up onto any device like this, remove it from the computer. Remove it. Because if CryptoLocker gets in and this is attached, it'll encrypt this too. Okay? So what was the point of backing up if it encrypted your backup? So don't put it on the computer unless you're doing a backup procedure. One other thing about CryptoLocker. Um, you can see on in my uh, file folders here, I have um, a folder for Dropbox and I have one for OneDrive. Now these are cloud folders. Okay, I, I have backed up stuff uh, in Dropbox and Dropbox is a cloud service. That, that just simply means that if I'm out somewhere at a client's and I need one of the programs that I didn't bring with me, I know it's in Dropbox. So I log into Dropbox and get it. But CryptoLocker can grab a hold of that Dropbox folder and it can encrypt the whole thing. So just because your stuff is on the cloud does not make it safe. Okay? Crypto lockers can encrypt cloud folders. And they're likely to do it because you're, you, you're attached to the internet. That folder is available. So as soon as it finds it, it's going to encrypt it. So here again, that's another reason to take all of this stuff and put it on a backup device. Which that program you were talking about? Locker. Crypto Locker. Uh, it can be downloaded in the background on your computer from a website you have visited, or a uh, someone can send you a, a corrupted file, like a picture or a piece of music, something corrupted with Crypto Locker in it, and it will launch and it will run, and you won't know it until it says, "Oh, your computer's locked. Give me three hundred and eighty dollars, or a Bitcoin." which is worth about 900. Um, so that's uh, the one thing about uh, backing up 
and uh, crypto lockers that we have we have to understand and discuss is that just because you've backed up on the cloud doesn't mean your stuff is safe. The third part of this is yes, backing up off site. And so that's the third leg of this stool. Um, if you have really, really important stuff like family pictures from uh, that you have scanned into your computer and you've had them for years and years and years and your, your constant fear is that you're going to lose them, which is a good fear to have because it's not if a hard drive is going to fail, it's when. It's not if, it's when. So getting this really important stuff into, um, onto a media that you can get away from the computer and away from your house uh, into a safe place. Okay, so you want to give this backup, this off-site backup, when we say off-site, we're talking about your house. Off-site backup, you want to give it to your, one of your kids, a trusted friend, um, something like that. And the thing that you want to do with it is, is use what's called, what we call archival media. That just means a really good DVD quality. A really good quality DVD is archival media. So when you burn all this stuff to DVD and you give it to your friend in an off-site situation, if your house burns down, then it can happen, we all know somebody, then this really important my life stuff is safe because it's not at your house. Okay? It's not at your house. So that's the third leg of the stool. A copy on your computer, a copy close at hand at your house, and a copy off-site. Okay? And when I say that, it's just for the really most important stuff. If, you've, if the only copy of your, of your will, besides the one your lawyer has and you don't like them anymore, is a paper copy that you scanned into your computer, get that puppy on a DVD and off-site to a trusted friend or relative. Okay? Um, so there we go with that. Now, I'm going to talk about um, backing up to the cloud. And um, my, I'm going to talk about two services. I'm going to leave uh, Google for another day. Uh, we have Dropbox, which is a service that's free uh, up until I think, I think they give me five gigs. And OneDrive, I think they give me a gig. No, five gigs. Five gigs? Okay. I have Dropbox and OneDrive. Yeah. But I have never used it. Well, as long as uh, Dropbox, Dropbox on your desktop, you can drag files to Dropbox just like you would any other folder. Okay? And they will go from Dropbox through an internet connection to your Dropbox on the cloud. Now, do you have your username and password for that Dropbox? <laughs> the, only, the only way to know for sure is to try and log in through your web browser. Then went down, they said, put it on, and that's all I did. Yeah, okay. Because if you don't have a username and password, or you don't know it, it's useless to you. Okay, and the way to find out is yes. Okay, you can sign up for a drop for a Dropbox account, and I'm just going to um, go to Dropbox here, and um, I'm going to go to the sign-in page, and Dropbox is going to ask me for my email address and my password. Okay, and it will show me in a web page everything that I can see in that Dropbox folder. Well, if nobody gave you the username and password for the Dropbox that you have on your desktop, 
then it's no good to you because uh, you can't get at it anymore. All right? Um, so here are all of my files in my Dropbox folder. Okay? And I've got a bunch of them. And now I'm going to log into Dropbox through a web page. Um, and I'm going to tell it, don't remember me, because I don't want it to. Please change your password. We expired your password as a security precaution. Blah! <laughs> I'll have to do that later. Anyway, if it would let me in, it would show me that list that was in that folder on my desktop. Okay? I'll have to do that later. I ain't going to do it now. Um, these, cl these cloud services, um, as you just plainly saw, uh, are pretty good about security. So if you want to have um, sensitive documents on a cloud service, you can go ahead and do it um, because they are pretty good about security. Um, if you are a type that um, trusts no one for any reason at any time, uh, please don't use cloud services for uh, these kinds of documents because you won't sleep at night. Okay, it's just that simple. You won't sleep at night. Who's rummaging around in my stuff? Um, okay, let me just go back here. OneDrive... Um, is another um, is a service from Microsoft and I think it just auto it just automatically yeah it backs up um, the my documents folder and the pictures folder okay it automatically backs it up as soon as as soon as you activate OneDrive that's what it's going to do for you it's going to automatically back those two folders up. You can tell it to back up more stuff, um, but it's going to do those two. Because that's usually where your most important stuff is. Is that the cloud too? Yes. This is OneDrive. This is a cloud service from Microsoft. Um, I'm not going to show you uh, Google right now because it's. Um, I'm going to leave that for another day. Um, and here again, it's I'm seeing all of this stuff in a in what looks like a local folder. And remember, when I say local, I'm talking about the computer here. If uh, it's it's showing me in a local folder what I have on the cloud. Okay, um, that's pretty much it for for cloud folders. Um, there are a couple of other options to do if you have um, a smartphone or a tablet um, these work really really well because let's say you're playing with your tablet and you find something you would really like to keep in half on your computer well getting stuff from your computer from your tablet to your computer is a huge pain in the woohoo Okay? It's a real pain getting something off of a phone onto a computer. If you have a cloud service like Dropbox, you just put it in Dropbox. Now you can see it from any computer on the planet. And you can download it and you can have it and you can work with it and, uh, and it's really good that way. So whatever computers you have become compatible with these cloud services. 
they all have a way of, of dealing with these cloud services. So the compatibility is, is a great thing to have. It really and truly is. Uh, if, you've, uh, if you've got a Mac user in the family, um, it, all of this stuff becomes compatible um, in cloud services uh, in these folder types. Okay, they can log into these folders and the stuff is compatible to use. Except for programs. Um, now, uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about, uh, James touched on it, um, is that you cannot back up programs. Um, I'm in the root directory of the computer right now, in, into the C directory, local disk C, and this is where all of the programs were installed as I, uh, as I downloaded the program and installed it on the computer. This is where they were installed. Uh, let us take, for instance, this program right here, Bellarc. It's one of the last, latest ones I put in. Um, that program, as I downloaded it from the internet, was just a big ball of data. When I told the program to install, it tore itself apart into about 50 pieces. It put the main body of the program on the, on the, uh, in the C directory, in programs, and a bunch of other stuff went everywhere. It went into the app data folder, it went into the local folder. It made a whole bunch of entries into the registry. Okay, it did all kinds of things, and all of these these uh, programs here did all, did exactly the same thing. It broke itself apart into fifty or sixty pieces and planted stuff all over the place. So now, what I cannot do is I can't take this Bell Arc folder and save it somewhere else, then put it back on another computer and expect it to work. It won't. I have to make complete reinstall. Okay, so that's why you cannot back up programs. Now, a way to quote unquote back up programs is to just write what programs you had down and back up that and then go through the list. Oh, yeah, I, I had this, re download that. Re -download yeah, this. it's, <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people ask me all the time, well, can you back up my programs? No, I cannot. That's not possible. It's not possible. Because all I first off I'd never find all of these pieces that could plant it all over the place, and the the last part of the puzzle is that it makes all of these entries into the registry. Now, as I said, it, you can back up the EA, the installer for yeah. this, but those can take a lot of uh, gates. Yeah, the installer, the installers all came into the downloads folder. Okay, you can back up the entire downloads folder where you downloaded all this stuff, but that's because you need to reinstall everything that you had here. All right, that's okay. Um, you can do that, um, but maybe the thing you want to do is, like J James said, make a list of what you had, and then uh, instead of um, backing up the downloads folder, go out and get the latest download of this program. Okay, 90% of them are all free. Are we so, supposed to be keeping all the downloads? You can. Um, we, we just do it because we're lazy and don't go to the downloads folder. <laughs> yeah, um, but like I said, um, if you want, if the, the best way to back up your downloads is to write down what you have. Then if you ever have to re-download them, you go to the download place and download them. Then you get the latest version. There are some versions of, of downloads here. This is uh, the Thunderbird Setup 45. I think we're up to 60 now. Okay. But maybe I want to keep that one for, for an old computer. I don't want to run the 60 on it. I want to run the 45. Because it's more compatible with that old iron. Or if you were me, back with Firefox, way back when, I liked how Firefox looked at like version eight. 
when we were already on like version 20. And so I just kept the version 10 version because I liked the look of it more. But You liked the look of it, but a lot of stuff didn't work, yes. Well, my computer manufacturer, Acer, keeps yes. saying to me, I get the little pop up, create an Acer backup right away. Even now, after two or three years, it's yeah. having it's, it, 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 it wants you to back up to the, to the Acer to service. The, yeah, to the Acer stuff. Yeah. Um, the reason that they ask you to do that is so that um, when you buy another Acer, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is what they're hoping for, okay, then the backup is compatible. I don't know whether it would be compatible if you tried to log in through a Lenovo. Yeah, you can see, yeah. Okay, we don't know that. But they, and they're there every time, in my well, face all the time. The yeah. other thing that they want to uh, back up are all their programs. Oh, like their if, you, stuff. if you buy an Acer, you get a bunch of Acer pro pro right. programs. Right. They want to back that up because if you just do a reinstall of Windows with a Microsoft Windows, you get nothing. <laughs> you have no programs. Okay, exactly so. Exactly so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions about backing up? Any more questions about backing up? We're just about done for the day, so any other questions? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I recently um, registered for Gmail. Right. And so I sent two of these lectures from my iPad to my computer with the Gmail. Right. I don't know where they are. <laughs> um, okay. I'm just going to quickly log into Gmail. Uh, mine is different than yours because I've done things to it. Um, but I'm going to log into Gmail quickly here. Um, now, mine looks a little different than yours. Uh, yours probably has three panels across the top for uh, uh, inbox. Um, what are the other? Updates and uh, promotions. Promotions, yeah. A and uh, stuff like that. It has three tabs across the top. Then down the side here, um, it probably has um, uh, ba -ba -ba. I would if I knew it was like oh, yeah. I've I've made all kinds of changes to this that it doesn't look like your stuff. Um, but the place to go looking for email that you have um, um, on your computer that you may not be able to find. Um, oh, come on. No. Are you talking about the inbox? That's right on the top. Yeah. You, should, you probably have a folder here called All Mail in your Gmail folder. If you haven't made any changes like I have, no. you probably have a folder called All Mail. It will be in there. Okay, because the all mail folder shows you everything, all of the spam you got, okay, all of the all of the junk mail you got. If you if you're telling Gmail to that certain certain kinds of email are always junk, okay, uh, in the all mail folder you will probably find it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. 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 Anything else? I just noticed that all when you mentioned junk, now I'm getting about 20 or 30 pieces of junk mail that they, that they, mm -hmm. they automatically made. Yes, you are. And it used to be two or three, maybe. I cleaned this out last night about 11 o'clock. This is my spam folder. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is nothing. You can do about spam and junk mail. Nothing. Um, Man, yours, yours is tame compared to mine. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> uh, I've only got eight pieces here. Um, let me just have a look inside the trash here. No, uh, that's not where it is. <coughs> Uh, ba -ba -bum 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 -bum. 
No, oh, okay, trash. I don't think I put anything in the trash lately. Oh yeah, I've got a few pieces of trash there. And like I say, I did this all out last night. It's back. <laughs> it's got more back. Okay. Uh, there is nothing you can do about spam. Spam is with us forever. All right. Uh, there was one other question. Yes. My computer told me I should back up. And what 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 do you want to buy? You know, put it like CDs. Um. So your your Windows is telling you to back up. Yeah. Okay. Uh. James didn't get into this, and I didn't get into it, but uh, the 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 Windows backup procedure is very complex. Um, you can yes, you can go and buy one of these and plug it in, and the next time it tells you to back up, you can go ahead and do it. But if you don't know what you're doing, um, every time it says backup. It will back up the entire computer. And you don't need to do that. The first time around, you back up the entire computer. The next time around, you have to change this backup program to say, don't back up the entire thing, only the changes. So if I made a new document, back that up. If I changed a document, back that up. This is called incremental backup. Okay? But in the uh, in the Windows world, this is a very complex program. And I have seen that in most cases people that use it after a while it doesn't work very well. So there are other form there are other ways to make backups and one of them is that if you buy a new brand new one of these and you go rooting around in the directory before you start okay there will be a program on it to allow you to back up your computer with the program that comes with this okay there's a program on it to uh, to allow you to back up your computer properly the other way to do it is to do it by hand Okay, and that way you're going to get the most important stuff. Um, yes, it's great for autom to have your computer up automatically, and you would want to do that if you were a business. But for you home gamers that are not business people, uh, backing up by hand is probably the best way to do it. You just back those folders up, you back up those new files. And you back up that most important life stuff that we talked about. Okay? Good. We're done for the day. Thank you so much. I'll get this up as quickly as I can. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.